Did you know that the scriptures tell us how Jesus covers sin? I know a lot of you have heard about that whole concept about, you know, just Jesus covering your sin, that your sin is covered. But how does that work? And if you don't know exactly how that works, how do you know that your sin is covered? So let's get right into this. Let's start with James chapter 5, verse 19. The scripture says, Brothers, if any among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, there's the key, turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. So this is about covering sins. James says that the way you cover someone else's sin is by turning them away from sin, turning them from the error of sin so that they don't sin anymore. And this just isn't just some passage pulled out of nowhere. This comes from a long history of doctrine throughout the scriptures, all the way from Genesis to Revelation. Consider, for example, Ezekiel chapter 18. It makes it very clear. If you are a wicked person, if you're a sinner, and you repent of your sin, you change, you don't sin anymore, you change your ways, then those sins that you used to do, key is used to do, are not counted against you anymore. Likewise, if you're a righteous person and you start sinning, then all of the righteousness that you did before is not counted anymore you are going to be judged as a sinner. So changing is the key here. Turning is the key here. And some of you might say, well, how does that tie into Jesus? How does that tie into how Jesus covers sin? Before we connect the dots here, let's just go into one more scripture. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. He who conceals his sins doesn't prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them, finds mercy. Who finds mercy? Just those who believe, those who have faith. Remember, it's the Old Testament. It's Hosea that says that the just shall live by faith. But it also says you won't have mercy unless you renounce your sin, unless you turn from the error of your way, just as James says in the book of James chapter 5. So we have a formula here. It is change and you will be judged according to your current lifestyle, according to how you currently conduct your life, according to your current actions. If you used to be righteous, but now you've turned to be a sinner, you will be judged as a sinner and all the righteousness, God won't even see it. If you used to be a sinner, but now you've been free by the power of God from that sin. And trust me, God has the power and the will to set you free from sin. If God sets you free from sin, then you are not a sinner anymore, but you serve God now. You are a slave of righteousness, not a slave of sin. And if that's the case, the sin that you used to be involved in will not be counted against you anymore because it is in the past, because you've repented from it. And just as Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13 says, if you confess and renounce your sin, if you turn from your sin, then you will find mercy. That's conditional. You will find mercy upon repentance. No wonder Jesus preached repentance. The first thing he ever said was repentance. In fact, the last thing he said to his church in Revelation chapter 2 and 3 was repent. It was his first word. It was his last word to his church, by the way, not to the world, to his church. No wonder it was the first message of the apostles when they went out to preach. No wonder it is throughout the book of Acts. No wonder it is throughout all of the letters of Paul and Peter and John. Repentance is key. So once again, you might say, well, so how does that tie into Jesus covering our sins? How do you connect the dots here? Well, you see, John the Baptist introduced Jesus, okay? Behold the Lamb of God, John said, who takes away the sin of the world. Notice, he didn't say, behold the Lamb of God who, who turns a blind eye to the sin of the world. He didn't say, behold the Lamb of God who sweeps your sin under the rug. No, he said, behold the Lamb of God 
who takes away the sin of the world. There's a big, big difference between sweeping your sin under the rug and actually cleaning it up. The kingdom of God is not full of people with skeletons in their closets and filthy, rotten trash under every rug. The kingdom of God is about pureness, is about holiness. And Jesus gives us the power to repent of our sins. That is why Jesus died. Remember, Paul said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Not, well, Jesus went on the cross for me and he paid the debt for me. That's not what Paul said. He said, I am crucified with Christ. We have to identify with him. Paul also said in Romans chapter 6, how can you, being dead to sin, live in it any longer? You can say, well, how can I be dead to sin? Easily, by faith, by the faith of the cross. To look at the cross and to say with Paul, I am crucified with Christ. All of my sinful passions and lusts, all of my sin is crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. No wonder Paul rebuked the believers in Rome saying, how can you who are dead to sin live it any longer? If you're dead to sin, you can't live in it any longer. Dead men don't sin. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24 makes it very clear. Those who belong to Christ, those who are Christ, have, not going to, but have crucified their sinful nature with its passions and desires, with all of its lust. It's done by faith on the cross. I am crucified with Christ. Jesus died so that you could identify with him, so that you could say, I am crucified with him. My old sinful nature, my old sinful lifestyle is dead and gone. It is crucified. It has died on the cross. And just as Jesus rose again, so I raise with him in newness of life. I'm a brand new creation in Christ, born again. So just as James made it clear, the way that you can cover someone's sin is by turning them from sin in the same way Jesus covers our sins by turning us from sin. He covers you from sin by setting you free from slavery to sin. That is how Jesus covers sin. Jesus said, I don't come for the righteous, but I come to call the sinners to repentance, not to come and say the sinner's prayer before me. No, I come to call the sinners to repentance. And so did every apostle and prophet all the way through the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. How did Jesus cover our sin? In the same way that James exhorts us to help other people cover their sin, and that is by turning people from sin, turning them from the error of their way, and change their lifestyle. Jesus covers sin by giving you the power to repent of your sin. Because he who confesses and renounces their sin finds mercy.